Welcome to Silicon Valley Successes. On today's show, we have Ray Belner and Shannon Kay, who are the founders of Startup Art Fair, which is a unique contemporary art experience where art professionals and the art-loving public gather to discover today's most talented independent artists through hotel art fairs, curated art exhibits, collector advising, and private art sales and rentals. And you're going to meet them in a moment. Welcome to Silicon Valley Successes. We interview experts and entrepreneurs to give the world access to the knowledge and experience that is here in Silicon Valley. Our mission is to create opportunities for those who seek them and help you to become the next Silicon Valley success. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Thanks for having us. This is a nice place you have here. Uh, thank you guys. <laughs> Shannon and Ray, thank you guys for being on Silicon Valley Successes. Thanks for having us. So, first question, why start your own business? Why start your own company? Mm, ask him. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that good one. question. Well, <clears throat> I started uh, uh, Startup Art Fair because I was looking as an artist, uh, I was looking for a fair that would um, help me to get my work in front of the public without having a gallery as an intermediary. I wanted to have an experience that uh, you don't normally see in art fairs out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't finding it, so I created it myself. So you had this problem out there, and you wanted a better, you wanted to create the solution for it. Right. Exactly. <clears throat> and then, Shannon, how did you partner with Ray on this? Well, I've had my own business for years, a decorative painter. I've done a lot of creative businesses. And so um, when he had this idea for the art fair, I thought, that's just this really nice, I guess what you call white space, you know, okay. like this sweet spot that really isn't tapped. And I just have a real uh, interest in the marketing side of business. I find mm -hmm. it to be so creative. And to take the attention away from my own business and just focus on his for a while was kind of a relief. Mm -hmm. And it wow. made me feel really excited again about business. Mm -hmm. So I just jumped in and said, I'll handle the marketing part. So a lot of the communication and honing in like our message and reaching out to people who could help us make this a success. Yes. It should also be mentioned too that I did start the business with a partner who's no longer with the company. His oh. name is Steve Zavatero and he was a, a, a gallery owner. Mm -hmm. And so we brought together you know, his skills from the art world as on that side of the business and mine from the art side, I guess. And we started it as co-founders. Shannon was always with us from the very beginning in a variety of capacities, Shitty. but eventually after Steve left, <laughs> became like our business development manager yeah. and our marketing person. And now we call her the co-director of the fair. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Because she's yeah. my right-hand person. Yeah. So fun. could you tell me a little bit more about these dynamics in the business mm -hmm. as people come and go from the founding team? I mm -hmm. mean, especially when it's so small, two or three people, if someone yeah. leaves, yeah. that's a huge difference in the company. What was yeah. that like? Oh, well, I mean, it was huge. I didn't know what I was going to do because um, when Steve and I were partners, it was Steve and me and Shannon in a, a much smaller Support. role yeah. and then a PR person who was, mm. like we like to call her the fifth Beatles. She was <laughs> de facto a startup art fair person, but Danielle Smith, our PR person, has been mm -hmm. with us from the very beginning. And we had, um, did we even have a, a intern? an intern then? No. Not yet. So yeah, it was just really four of us. And so mm -hmm. Steve leaving, that was like a huge, a huge gap. gap. So when yeah. Steve left, how much more burden was on your shoulders? How much more <laughs> burden was on yours? How did that look? Initially, I think there was just sort of the shock of it happening. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's goods and bads that come with all of those decisions that are made. But I remember asking Ray, so what are you going to do now? What mm. happens? And he th said, well, maybe I'll do this part time or I don't know. You know, it was kind of a shock. Like, I have no idea. And that's when I realized I could actually fill this big spot. That's um, stuff I really yeah. like doing. Mm. And so I said, well, what if I came in and we tried to do this together? And then I knew immediately we needed to build more team interns and things like that. But what's interesting is once you start filling that need, yeah. the pieces come. Interesting. You know, yeah. I knew we needed interns and 
other help, but as soon as we talked about partnering, Ray was speaking in a class at um, UCSF, I mean, SF State? No, uh, yeah, I think so. And right. And one of the, a friend of his who's also an instructor told one of her students, you know, you should reach out to start mm. a BART fair. So it's like just oh, when Oh, the you, academy. Yeah, yes. oh, the academy. When you start putting yeah. those pieces in motion, the things come in to like yeah. Pretty quickly after that, we got you. our first intern, Mika England, mm -hmm. who ended up becoming our content curator and our major admin okay. person. So now she's yeah. working with us almost yeah. full time. And she started was, as an intern. And that was yeah. through an introduction at a university? Is that where you mm -hmm. found from your a, From the a academy professor of university. who yeah. was working at the Academy of Art, yeah. Okay. So that's a good avenue then for, to find yeah. interns is going through universities mm -hmm. and yeah. partner in there. Yeah. Good advice. Yeah. So other <laughs> than, I mean, a co-founder leaving, that's huge. Yeah. But I'm sure over the last few years, and, and please give us a little more background on Startup Art Fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then tell us some more obstacles that you face. But let the audience know a little bit more about Startup Art Fair, yeah. this two, three year journey. Okay. Or has it been shorter or longer than that? <laughs> no, it's been about five. Five. Okay. Going on yeah. five now, yeah. yeah. You passed that little hump. Right. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I think the thing that Ray won't say is that he is a very accomplished artist. He's had an incredible art career. He's a sculptor, conceptual artist himself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of artists hit this mid-career phase where they're not the young, up-and-coming, hot ticket mm -hmm. item right now, but they still have this incredible body of work. And it's harder to get attention for your work uh -huh. as you move along in your career. And so um, that's how he kind of found this gap. It was like, I don't really want to be in the gallery system anymore. Okay. And yet I don't want to go do an art in the park kind of event. That's mm. not where I'm at either. So where can I go? And he started talking about why couldn't there be a fair for someone like me? I can sell my own work. I'm a business person. Yeah. I can represent myself and I know I can manage this and so that's how he yeah. started figuring out how to make that happen. And I, I taught professional practices for about 15 years as oh. well. So professional mm -hmm. practices for artists. So I taught artists how to um, market themselves, write about their work, present mm -hmm. themselves in public and really be their own um, representatives. And so doing the fair is just kind of an interesting kind of confluence of you know, my interest in helping young artists mm -hmm. and my skill set in terms of knowing the business of art and also my own personal need as an artist to have a place where someone like myself yeah. can um, bring their work to the public without, you know, the intermediaries of the gallery system. Mm -hmm. well, the irony about it is now that I've created this fair, I can't do it myself <laughs> I'm too busy running it. <laughs> so <laughs> I've kind of screwed myself there. Yeah. <laughs> But that's another business, so we'll yeah. work on that. But we've had a lot yeah. of ups and downs in the business, and you know, <laughs> to your point or to your question, um, is that there has been there have been setbacks. We've you know we've mm -hmm. expanded the fair after you know a year or two, and we you know went to Chicago and realized that wasn't really a good market mm -hmm. for us, so okay. we had to pull yeah. back from that. And we've tried a few things. We had a uh, we had an app, a mobile app for yeah. startup that we tried didn't really work. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, our, my feeling is we've got to try a lot of things and mm -hmm. whatever doesn't work, get rid of it quick and move on to the next thing. But keep yeah. the focus on what your mission is and your goals are. How do you decide yeah. what to test next? <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> that's on what mood we're in. <laughs> that day. A lot of people come to us with a lot of really great ideas yeah. and they're like, you know what you should do? you should do yeah. fairs in malls. And <laughs> yeah. we're like, okay, you can do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of great ideas out there, right? It's just yeah. like how much time and energy do you have and how do they fit the mission? One thing that Shannon actually helped with the business, uh, I, I felt, was really helping us focus on our mission. Okay. You know, and, and if we're going to try an idea out, how does that relate to the mission of what right. startup is? And startup's mission is very simple. It's to partner with independent artists to help them become successful solo mm. entrepreneurs. Right. So if whatever initiative comes in front of us or gets on our plate doesn't fit with that, mm -hmm. we don't do it. But on the other hand, there's lots of other things we can do as yeah. well that will fulfill that mission. The question yeah. is, do we have the time, the money, yeah. the manpower? Yeah. Um, and that's always a challenge because on the one hand, being a small organization, you can be really nimble. You can yeah. try something yeah. and you can toss it very quickly if you don't like it. You can try something else. Um, but you also, whatever you want to try, you have yeah. to figure out who's going to take on all the tasks that it takes to try that thing. Mm -hmm. 
And so we're always having to kind of reassess what each of us is doing oh, and realizing even on a, a small level, we oh. always have to be communicating with each other to go. make sure that we're not stepping on each yeah. other's toes and we're all doing what we're the best at. So with such a small team, if you want to try some new, are you sitting down having meetings going, okay, we believe it will probably take this many more hours to do this other thing. Do we think as a mm -hmm. collective it will pay off enough or is there one person on the team that's the final decision and we're doing yeah. it this way. How does the dynamic okay. <laughs> He thinks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, we do. We talk about everything and we see, you know, what we can handle. And what I love about my team right now is that everybody is very optimistic mm -hmm. and very gung-ho and believes in the mission. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we don't, I don't get a lot of pushback on my ideas anyway. People aren't like, wait, well, we can't do uh -huh. that, Ray. Um, but everyone speaks up for sure. We yeah. meet every week. Okay. So the whole team gets together every week and we kind of go through each person's mm. job, what they're working on, how things are going, what they need help with. And so that's really where these ideas and things will come up. Someone will say, I heard this thing or I want to try something new. And we all figure out together if that's a good idea mm. based on our mission and what we're trying to accomplish. So we definitely spend that time. And then obviously Ray has the final say, but it's also us um, all giving opinions from the work that we're all hunched over, you know, all week on, what we're focused on. So how important is communication in these meetings and how do you go about either improving or correcting mm -hmm. if there's kind of a, 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 I don't know, a little like hiccup a disagreement in the, yeah. Or, yeah. I think we just work it out. I mean, we're all really dynamic people on the team, but I think we're like, like Ray was saying, we all yeah. really support each other. So if someone really feels strongly about something, then for the most part, that person will get to give that thing a try. Okay. You know, I think we're all pretty flexible. Yeah. Um, but People you, get to get to really own <clears throat> their part of the company. Mm -hmm. okay. So like Mika, who does all, a lot of the content, most of it, frankly, mm -hmm. you know, she gets to really own that and decide how to do it and put it together and right. timing on that and stuff with yeah. input from us, of course. But... You know, and then we've got Josephine now, who's our art consultant, and she gets to decide what she's going to put in a particular mm -hmm. exhibition and what artist she wants to work with and, you know, when she's going to have a reception for it. Yeah. We're, and we just, we get behind it if, yeah, if we, we can. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you say that the autonomy of everyone being able to self-manage their time is a big cause of the success <coughs> of Startup Art Fair? Yeah. I think that it, it really helps because if you're not paying people a lot like we are, <laughs> you, you got to give them something, <laughs> which is autonomy. <laughs> they get to be their own bosses. <clears throat> I mean, the, we're growing and we're uh, thankfully getting to start to pay people more. Mm -hmm. um, and this year looks to be like even more. People yeah. will be getting bumps in their, in their salaries. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's a big part of it, is feeling like you have a say, mm -hmm. that you have a stake in the business, um, that you're helping to grow it. And also the fact that we try to show them appreciation mm -hmm. for what mm -hmm. they do. Um, and I think they know that we you know, really appreciate their efforts. They yeah. work their butts off for us. So. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> so Startup Art Fair started with one location in San Francisco, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's now expanded to several. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk about that expansion. How did you go about it? I know you mentioned trying Chicago and then maybe yeah. it's not there, but how do you determine your market? How do you decide what's that growth plan look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from the very beginning, I realized after doing the first fair, we couldn't exist as a company that could pay even the two founders of the fair if we didn't have more than one fair. Because okay. it's just not economically viable to exist as a business on one location so and m most art fairs have multiple places you'll mm -hmm. you'll see like even freeze which is a big fair that's coming to mm -hmm. la this um spring they have a new york and la london and miami mm -hmm. versions oh. yeah um and that. so you know we decided my former partner and i decided to expand pretty quickly after the first fair the next year we did two fairs, so we included LA, and then the third year we included Chicago, and the goal was to include <coughs> a different venue every year. Okay. Um, and the criteria for including uh, a new venue or a new city 
is really we have to look at the market. How big is the art market? Is it big enough to support another fair? Are there independent artists in that market? Because that's the other thing. That, that's our people. Mm. If there aren't artists that need mm. the fair, then There's why no are fair. we there? Yeah. Mm. Um, and do they have another fair, a bigger fair that we could satellite onto? Because we're little, wow. so we try to do our fair at the same time as some of the bigger fairs. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the criteria. So yeah, we quickly went from San Francisco, LA to Chicago. Second year of Chicago wasn't that great, and we had to cancel it. Mm. Um, and I think it's because I didn't do enough real research on the artists that lived in that community. Well, Lots of independent artists in Chicago, yeah. mm -hmm. not a big gallery scene, so I thought that's good for us, has a really big okay. fair, I thought that was good for us. But what I didn't take into consideration in Chicago is that the real estate's really inexpensive there. So every artist has a very inexpensive storefront, <laughs> and almost all of them brand their own nonprofits. Yeah. So oh. when I came into town and said, hey, give me a big fat check, I'll give you some exposure in our art <laughs> fair, yeah. it's going to be great for you. And they were like, uh, I run my own business out of my storefront. Yeah. I have a show every month, I don't need you. So, I mean, in, in a sense, they're almost too independent for our independent art fair. Okay. Yeah. But so I've learned to, like, dig a little deeper when huh. I'm looking into a new region for a new fair. Okay. So now when you're going to a new area, you're really testing the market, boots mm -hmm. on the ground, taking yeah. surveys, talking to people before yeah. actually making any capital investments. Right. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, much more research is needed. Yeah, mm, that's great advice for for startups. Yeah, I know, and I, le I learned it the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. another question. So over this time, I, I saw that you included an advisory board. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that. Why create an advisory board? Has any positive things come about oh my that? Gosh, yeah. Um, yeah. Some feedback. Yeah. So when Ray first started the fair, and he would you recommend. Startups make an advisory board. From oh my the gosh, hundred percent, oh, absolutely. It's been the best thing we've it's ever done. The, yeah, it is the number one thing you should do. I think because mm -hmm. there's nobody that knows how to manage and innovate in every facet of a business. Mm -hmm. Nobody does, right? And it's that idea you're supposed to hire people around you who are better than you mm -hmm. at what they do. And so, um, but when you're a small entity and you can't afford to hire that whole team, then bringing advisors in is a really incredible way to keep your mind and your perspective fresh on what you're mm. doing. It also holds you accountable because you tell these people like, hey, we'd like <laughs> some investors or we'd like a new marketing program. They give you all this input and they're like, now we gotta do it, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get the list out, you know. Um, but in the beginning, I think most of the advisors that Ray grabbed on very quickly, that was mm. his, part of his business concept was to have advisors. Okay. They were mostly in the art world. Uh. And that's good in the beginning to make a lot of those connections and get people to understand we're not trying to buck the system or take you yeah. out of business. We're just trying to bring this new um, revenue stream and model to independent artists. So bringing that understanding and connection was really key. But then when I came in, I could see there were so many things we didn't know how to do very well. Oh. And so I started looking at the advisory council as more of a business opportunity and said, we need help with marketing and money and investing and all mm. these pieces. Who could we really talk to? And what was interesting about that process was we really had to look at people that we like. Okay. <laughs> you know, because again, we're going to ask them to invest in us, yeah. believe in us, give us their time, and we can be as generous with them as possible with the business, and we can help back. But we really needed people that would enjoy solving these problems with us. Interesting. Yeah. So, an advisory board, give some more advice on that to mm -hmm. startups out there. How do you go about finding people? You said your own network mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. start. How do you vet them to see if they're a good fit for your company? Yeah. And what do you expect from them? Information, but anything else? Yeah, we looked at the business and we looked at the pieces where we were lacking. Okay. That was number one. You know, we know how to run yeah. events now. We've gotten pretty good at that. Yeah. We know how to find rentals and vendors and all that. Um, but we don't know a lot about um, creating an investment package. Or do we want to sell the business? Or all that part is not something we're used to. Mm -hmm. So as we would meet different people, we would say we'd have a meeting. I have a dear friend who's um, 
works with Boston Consulting Group, mm. and so I'd say, do you think he'd want to talk to us about what he knows about consulting? Yeah. And so it was really kind of a personal approach to it. What's missing in the business in terms of our knowledge? And then who could fill that? And then we'd ask. And mm. if someone can't do it, we don't take it personally. Okay. If someone can, we're thrilled to have them help. We take all that input and we appreciate it. And I think the best advisors also just bring people to the fair and share uh, the experience. They connect us to people mm -hmm. who might want to collect art. So there's the business advising, but there's also just sort of believing in our mission and championing us. So mm -hmm. we enjoy it. It's, it's, that's my favorite part of the business. That's amazing advice. And to find out more, visit SiliconValleySuccesses.com. Check us out on LinkedIn, Facebook, where we give you up-to-date information. We also have little snippets and videos that you won't see on Silicon Valley Successes, the TV show, little outtakes that we know you'll enjoy at home. Now let's find out a little bit more information from Shannon and Ray. So tell us a little bit more about the advisors. What do you give advisors for their time and advice? What's the normal, what does that normally look like if it's okay to, to mm -hmm. ask that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, we, um, <clears throat> we it's a kind of an in-kind partnership ah. mm -hmm. with our advisors because we don't have a large enough income to actually pay them for their time. So they, they volunteer their time, but in exchange we invite them to all our special VIP events. They get free tickets to the fair. Whenever we do anything outside of the fair, we try to include them in it. Okay. Um, and at the fair, we usually do like a, an advisor cocktail and reception and uh, tour. Yeah. Um, so that's the way right now anyway, we can pay them back with in kind yeah. uh, oh, that's great. gifts. Yeah. yeah, and they can learn a lot about art too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we put on a really fun event, mm -hmm. and so being an advisor for us is not really a horrible thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody seems to really like coming to the fairs. And it's fun. They can bring their friends too, and then they can say, "Oh, I'm an advisory to this business. Why don't you yeah. come and join me?" Yeah. And it becomes really inclusive and fun for them, for the advisors as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, what do the next two to three years look like for Startup Art Fair? Yeah, well, I, I think our goals are to expand into more markets. Mm -hmm. So we're looking, um, well, this year we're adding another city, which we're going to announce at our fair in um, L.A. in February. Okay. Um, and then hopefully we'll ramp up to about five to six cities over the next five mm -hmm. years. Wow. Um, we do another little fair. We call it Small Works. Um, and so instead of in a hotel where every artist takes a room and does a solo exhibition, mm -hmm. it's a tabletop fair, almost like a craft fair, but really fine art. So people are in tabletops in a kind of a more of a convention hall setting. Mm -hmm. um, so we're thinking about alternating that between the big fairs. So San Francisco will have the regular big fair in yeah. April, and then in the summertime it'll have small works. LA, the same thing. We'll do LA in mm -hmm. uh, January, and then maybe further down in the year they'll have a small yeah. works fair so we could end up I mean ideally would be having like eight to ten fairs per year Wow yeah and so with all these new locations mm -hmm. how are you going out and finding new partners and new sponsors mm -hmm. for these fairs uh, the same way <laughs> we've been doing it since the beginning Scratching and just, clawing. Yes. Help, please no just building relationships I mean okay that, the network uh, yeah and it kind of sounds trite I, I think sometimes but we really are just trying to build relationships with people mm -hmm. and have them trust in us the more we do it the more our track record shows yeah. that we have a, a great organization and an incredible event. And so like going out into these new locations, when Ray's talking to people, he already has a reputation preceding him now, mm. which is really nice. Um, but we just, we also kind of know our market a little bit better and we know that certain people, like maybe certain financial institutions aren't the best match for us, mm. but beverages are and we love our oh. nonprofit organizations and we're figuring out those products and people that would really like to invest in us. Okay. So to recap all that we've talked mm -hmm. about today so far, we've talked about uh, there was a problem and you wanted to find that solution mm -hmm. for it. So you started a company, you had a co-founder that left and there was that big moment that people had to say, okay, what do we do now? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people in the company have to be very independent, and that's mm -hmm. uh, 
kind of reward people get for the low salaries? <laughs> right, right, yes. <laughs> Expand into new locations, you really mm -hmm. need to do some research, mm -hmm. feet on the ground. Also, the power of an advisory board mm -hmm. and finding those pieces that are missing from the company and you know, helping them out, paying them by, by including them in all these outside activities. Uh, what did we miss? What other great <laughs> information can you give startups out there? Well, we were thinking about that mm -hmm. on our way down here and talking about it. And I think the main thing that advice I would give to somebody starting a business is be prepared to fail. Oh. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and don't worry about it. It's going to happen. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to stumble. You're going to have bad ideas. And it's okay. You just have to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, you just can't hit a home run every single time. So just be ready for that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what was the thing that surprised me was, um, you know, I didn't, I thought I had a great idea and I thought all the ideas around that were going to work fine. Yeah. But I was really shocked, like when Chicago didn't work, for example. Yeah. Um, but I think if you, um, if you're prepared for that, if you're ready for that, and also be prepared to um, change things quickly. And that's the great thing about startups. So if you have to pivot or if you have to throw something out and start over again, you can do it pretty quickly. So yeah. Shannon Ray, please tell the audience at home how they can reach you, you know, a little bit of information on Startup Art Fair, all that good yeah. stuff. Um, go to startupartfair.com. We have a list of all of the fair events plus our consulting services and everything that you need to know, including a sponsor deck. So if you wanted to become a sponsor, all the information is on that site. And we also have a really nice Instagram feed at startupartfair.com. No, just uh, at startupartfair. At startupartfair. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we're also on Facebook. It's pretty easy to find us. And then we have our fairs um, in L.A. We'll be in April, February, February 15th. 15th sorry. Okay. And then San Francisco in April. Any fairs after that in case this episode airs maybe in April? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to announce, yeah. uh, we can't announce it now, but we're going to mm. announce a third City, okay. which mm -hmm. is going to happen in October, beginning yeah. of October. Okay. But San Francisco Fair, April 26th to the 28th. Yeah. And then San Francisco Small Works will be in July. July. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ray, Shan, thank you guys for coming on Silicon Valley Successes. We had a lot of great information today, a lot of stuff that can help startups out there around the world. View us next week as we have Kimberly Wakelin on, who is going to give us amazing information on productivity, startups, and more. See you next week. Thank you from all of us at Silicon Valley Successes. We hope you found the information presented today useful in your path to success. For further information on accessing the resources in Silicon Valley, you may visit us on the web at siliconvalleysuccesses.com, on Facebook, and YouTube. Thank you. And remember, we want to help you in your journey to become the next success.